And in bladder cancer, a duvalimab is being developed alone, but also in combination with tremolimumab. And the key to this is that um, it's my personal opinion that we use the second line cisplatin refractory bladder space as a ground to develop these drugs, helping patients, but developing drugs. The proportion of patients that we're benefiting at this stage is modest, 20, 30% response rates with a biomarker or in all comers. Um, and those patients that respond do well. But when one gives these drugs in combination with other agents, we've seen in other tumor types like melanoma, CTLA-4 with tremulumumab, you can see higher response rates. We haven't yet seen that data for duvalimab and tremolimumab together, but we hope to increase the response rates by somewhere in the region of I hope of 50% would be great. And then this combination is being tested against standard chemotherapy in the frontline setting in the Danube study. And this trial would be the first frontline randomized trial to read out with immune checkpoint inhibitors. It would be the first frontline randomized trial to read out for a very long time um, if it was positive to change practice. But I think really importantly, there is a chance that immune therapy will supersede chemotherapy. Some of the work that we've done has shown that if you give immune therapy and those patients fail and you sequence chemotherapy in, patients respond to the subsequent chemotherapy. Some people say they respond better. I don't think we have any evidence for that. But what we do have evidence for is what I think is a lack of cross-resistance. So sequencing these drugs is going to be incredibly important in the future. And it may be the case that in five years' time, we see new patients. I hope we test them for a biomarker, but I'm not convinced by that yet. We see patients, we test them for a biomarker, they get immune therapy first. If that works, they continue. If that doesn't work, they switch across the standard chemotherapy. And we'd, be like, we'd like to be pushing those overall survival curves, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% in the right direction. But also, the tail of the curve is really important. We know in the second line space, tezolizumab, duvalimab, other drugs can achieve long-term durable remissions, but maybe only 20% of patients. And what I'd like to see is us getting much closer to 50%. And it's my personal opinion that combination therapy is going to be required in the frontline setting to achieve that. So I'm really excited about what's happening in, in bladder cancer at the moment. We are going through a period um, of dynamic change of huge amounts of academic research, um, thousands, literally thousands of patients on trials for the first time. Um, we are going to discover soon um, about immune combinations. We're going to discover soon about chemotherapy combinations. There's also a really nice piece of work looking at biomarker analysis and then targeted therapy dependent on that biomarker with immune checkpoint inhibitors with duvalimab. Um, and that piece, that trial called Biscay, is another piece of the jigsaw for the future. And it's very likely, in my opinion, that at least one of these avenues is going to prove very effective for patients and really change the outcome for this very, very nasty disease.